What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another twin motion tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to use Megascan's free assets in order to create custom decals inside of twin motion. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so if you remember last week we talked about how Quixel Megascan's library has been made available for free for users of Unreal Engine and for twin motion. Well one of the cool things contained inside of here and we should do another video where we get more in depth on some of this stuff because this is really cool but one of the cool things that's contained inside of this library is there's a whole library of decals and so what decals are or decals are things that you can basically place on walls in order to add detail um, not just on walls but in a lot of different areas so you can add things like if you look at this there's like a damaged concrete or there's a um, there's all sorts of stuff asphalt cracks and fallen branches just all sorts of images that basically almost go on your image as kind of a um they, they almost go on your rendering as like a sticker that shows detail and so one of the cool things about this is there's now a way in order to bring these into twin motion it's kind of a workaround but let's go ahead and take a look at it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through this trending area and we're just going to select maybe this first option so we're going to select the asphalt patch option notice how basically what this is is this is an image where asphalt is kind of like ripped up right and so what we want to do is we want to download this image so we're going to go into our download settings. I'm just going to leave this at a 2K resolution. And what's going to be really important for this is we need to make sure that we bring down the albedo map and the opacity map. So that's going to be really important because we're going to have to combine these in a photo editing software in order to get this to work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring all of these down, but really the only ones you need are the albedo and the opacity. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to download this. And so once we download this file, we want to extract it into this folder. So I'm just going to right click on it and click on extract. This may be a little bit different depending on your PC, but basically what this is going to do is this is going to extract out all the maps that we downloaded. So if we open up and look at this, so maybe if we do like large icons or let's do extra large icons just so you can see them, you can see how you get all these different maps, right? You get an albedo map, which is basically your texture image. Um, you get your normal map, but the one we're really worried about is the opacity. And we'll talk more about this in a second. So you, you need to make sure that you have the albedo and the opacity. And so now if we were to go into twin motion, let's take a look real quick the way the decals work. So if you go into your objects like this, there's a section for decals. And so if you drag these in, so let's say I was to scroll down, for example, and pick out maybe like um, this damaged wall. Right. So basically what that's going to do is that's going to go on this wall like a sticker that makes things look more realistic. So if you look at this, um, this is basically looking like damage that was placed on this wall. And basically all this is is an image with some opacity applied to it on the wall. And so one of the cool things about this is notice how right here you can actually set the texture that goes on your wall. Right. So if I click on this. I can actually go in here and click on open and I can open a different file. And so if we were to go in here and do this right now, we could bring this in, we could double click on our albedo map and we could actually replace that image. But the problem is this doesn't look very good, right? And part of the reason this doesn't look very good is because this particular image, um, we're just bringing this in without any of the transparency associated with it. And so because of this twin motion is just reading this as an image and just kind of like plopping it on the wall right like you can adjust the offset and all of that but at the end of the day it's just like an image placed on the wall and so what we need to do is we need to edit our map so that it's a png file with the transparency associated with it so that means that we need to apply the opacity map to this image so that this is only showing um, the damage where it's supposed to. And so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to use Photoshop. You can use any photo editor. So GIMP is a free alternative that you can use. But we're going to open up Photoshop. And so we're going to start by opening our albedo map. So we're going to go into open in our photo editing software and we want to go find our albedo map. So we're going to open that up. That's going to open this as an image inside of our um, inside of Photoshop. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to mask out everything that isn't the damage here. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to start by also embedding our other map. So we're going to go to file, place embedded, and we're going to find our opacity map. 
And so when I find my opacity map, what it's gonna do is it's just gonna drop that on top of this image. So that's not exactly what we want. Um, basically what this map is, is this is a map showing us that anything in black should be masked out, anything in white shouldn't, and anything in gray gets like a partial transparency, right? So when you combine these together, what this gives you is it gives you a really realistic asphalt look. And so what we need to do is we need to take this image and add a layer mask to it. So in order to do that, I'll just undo this, is we're just gonna select our background image and we're gonna click on this button right here for add layer mask. And again, you can do this with any photo editing software that, that supports layers. Um, in this case, we're using Photoshop though. And so now what we need to do is we need to take this mask, we need to copy it and we need to paste it onto our layer mask right here. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna go into this image just by clicking on it and then we're just gonna do a control A or you can do a select all. So you can go up to the select menu and click on all. Basically what we wanna do is we wanna select all of the information inside of this layer. Now we're just gonna do a control C or you can do an edit copy. So once you do that, what we need to do is we need to paste this onto this map, or we need to paste this onto this mask layer. And so in order to do this, we need to open up our mask inside of our um, editor. And all we do here is we just alt click in order to open up our mask. So notice how when you do an alt click, this is gonna switch back and forth between your mask view and your object view, or your image view right here. So we wanna alt click on our layer, and then we just wanna do a control V, or we can do an edit paste, right? So basically what we've done is we've pasted this map or this mask information onto this mask layer right here. So now we can do an alt click to go back to our image. Notice how this looks the same. That's because this opacity map is still turned on and it's over top of this image. So what we wanna do is click the little eye right here in order to turn that off. And so you can see how what that gives us is that gives us basically a masked out version of this decal. So we've basically created an image that's just showing the decal in here. Well now we can export this to a PNG file because the PNG files maintain that um, transparency information. So we're just gonna do a file, export. You can just do a quick export as PNG. And we're just going to find this folder that we were in before and I'm just gonna label this something I recognize. So maybe like pothole underscore masked. So basically what that's done is that's exported this as a PNG file. And so for you to open that image up, it's going to look like this. So you can see how now the only thing that's showing is your actual asphalt information. Well now we can go back into twin motion. And so if we go into twin motion and we do what we did before, um, remember we still have this decal, decal that we had on the wall selected, but I'm just gonna click on this and I'm gonna go open that PNG file. So specifically, we are looking for the pothole masked PNG. So if I double click on this, notice how what this has done is this has brought in that asphalt patch image right here. And so now though, what we can do once we're done with this is we can take this object and notice how if this comes in distorted, you can also adjust the length and width. So if you want the length to be a little bit taller or something like that, you can go into the settings right here. Make sure this is really kind of the size that you want it to be. So sometimes you might get a little bit of image distortion. So just be a little bit careful when you're doing that, but you can adjust the size of this. And then when you're done, you can take this object find it over here and you can right click on it and you can add it to your user library. So if you add it to your user library and then go back and look in your user library, you can see how this is getting brought in right here. So, and you might wanna rename it first over here or you can rename it inside of your library as well. So I could just select this, right click and rename this asphalt patch. But now if I click and drag this in, I can bring this asphalt patch custom decal into my model, just like this. And notice how this maintains all of the different settings um, that your decals allow inside of Twin Motion. So you can use this to really quickly create custom decals using the Megascans library with Twin Motion and Photoshop. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you know you could 
do this? Have you created custom decals in Twinmotion? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.